What is up everybody, it is Life's Apprentice. Well today we're gonna to be teaching you how to do, how to shingle around a dormer. Um, so this is our dormer here. Um, we have valley on both sides. And in the front, we have a little strip. And uh, we have a valley, valley return right there. And then we have the front wall flashing up underneath there. Um, we already have the paper on and the valley metal on. Um, I have videos showing you guys how to do that kind of stuff. I have videos about showing you how to do a regular valley, all sorts of different things. But uh, I don't have a video specifically like this. And uh, this will show you how to properly shingle basically a dormer. And pretty much any dormer that you do is going to be very similar. Except for most dormers are going to have step flashing on them. This one does not. Um, in the sense that there's no wall going up. I'll make a video about that one of these days, but uh, we're gonna start shingling down there. We'll get right to it. Well, the first thing we need to do, we're gonna cut our excess valley, like so. We're gonna start shingling. Now, when you put this valley on, you're gonna wanna leave this loose um, so you can slide your shingles up underneath there. The biggest thing that you really got to pay attention to um, when you're doing this, and this I see done wrong all the time, is at least one of these courses needs to go underneath all of this. So they left this room here with the fascia board and the edge metal, but you can see right there that plywood is going to be in our way. But we want to make sure that this goes underneath the valley metal. So I'm just kind of showing you what we got going on here. I'm just cutting out a little chunk here. I'm hoping the way that this was done with the plywood is a little funky, but we'll get her in there. Now that's a little tricky and that cut's got to be perfect. All right, so we're gonna nail it as normal. I'm gonna skip a nail right here. Normally you would put a nail here, but I'm not going to. In this case. So here's what we got. Um, the plywood is right there, but that shingle goes up underneath all of this. And then, uh, goes up underneath all of that. And the main concern is that when water, ideally, if water is running down here, that it comes out onto the shingle. We don't want any gaps or cracks or anything right in here. Oh, my ladder's getting really bad, bud. I gotta, I'm gonna die. Yeah, that was bad. I'm kind of just cutting this the same way. And we want to be very, very certain that this is done properly. If it does leak, you're not going to see it because it's going to go through the soffit. It's not going to leak in the house. But many times when we tear off roofs like this, they are... Uh, leaking in these spots okay so we have that underneath we're gonna nail here we'll nail here and here that's gonna hold that valley down we want that valley to be held down and then we're not gonna put any more underneath for them on this valley all right so we got you saw we got our shingles underneath the valley and then um, we're running out our courses along this um, wall. And so we do not have a flashing at the moment, um, but you're gonna need some sort of a wall flashing, some sort of a 90 degree flashing that goes up the wall here and down over your shingles. So we're gonna have soffit and fascia that will close this off. Um, this will get closed off by fascia. 
but uh, we don't have a wall flashing so you're just gonna have to kind of imagine that it's there there's a flashing that comes down and over your shingles right here but this is how we finish the shingles so we keep a six inch offset roughly and um, we're gonna cut these down right up tight to the wall and then we're gonna nail them right at the top and those nails will um, not be exposed once we put the flashing on but we don't have the flashing so can't really show you that so what we're gonna do is continue this to that valley over there when we get to that valley we'll show you exactly what we do and to the other side um, we're gonna do basically the same thing as we did on the other side I have to cut that a little more and you gotta, you gotta make sure you're really really precise about these cuts what are you hitting on Okay, we gotta do a little more cutting. But we gotta make darn sure that this is right or this will leak because we have to cut this out, which sucks. Ideally, you don't wanna do that. Like I said, this is the most important part. So do not Okay, we have got it, and I will show you what it looks like here in a sec. You gotta be really, really, really careful, because you do not want a hole right here. So you need to make sure that this is up underneath there, and we got it probably a good inch underneath, which ideally would be a little bit more, but then our valley is our valley right here is covering and our cut is right about here. Um, it would be nice to have slipped it under there and not have to cut it, but in a lot of cases you are gonna have to cut it. Um, so I guess it is a good example. People are gonna tell me I did it wrong, they always do. The people who tell me I did it wrong, they don't have any videos on their channel. They don't have the balls to show what they do. So this is how we do it. And uh, I guarantee you that's not gonna leak. If you're really worried about it, you can do caulking up in here. Um, you can add flashing across here, which is another option. Um, you could do shingle tins along here. There's lots of ways that you could do this. And I'm not saying that this is the best way, the only way, this is the way that we're doing it in this situation. When we're doing a dormer like this, almost always the smaller part of the roof is gonna go under the large part of the roof. So there are some exceptions to that rule if you have differences in pitch. In this case, everything's like a 612. Um, so on this particular dormer, and like I said, most of them, you're gonna run your dormer up underneath the main roof. We're gonna start right here. And this is where we just finished and left off and we when you do a valley um, the manufacturer is going to recommend that from the center of the valley to the top of your piece that you have 12 to 16 inches um, up out of the valley now this isn't going to show but we want it 12 to 16 inches so from the center of the valley now we're gonna nail one here, okay, on this particular one. And we're gonna nail two up here. Now eventually we'll be into full courses. And then this is what's known as a closed valley. Um, 
open valleys are not common in our area. Um, I know I've made several videos similar to this and everybody says closed valleys leak. Well, we have some of the harshest weather for shingles in the world and we don't have issues. So a lot of people just have opinions and uh, do things their way. And I know out west and down south, open valleys are a lot more common. Around here, they're not. So again, we're gonna put one nail here, making sure that when we do this, we push this down really tight in the valley. We don't want, we don't want any play in this. Otherwise, when you stand on it, it's gonna pull these nails out. We don't want that. Here we can put two. You wanna keep, if this is the center of your valley, you wanna keep your nails probably six inches out of the center. You do not wanna put nails anywhere near this area um, in case you get ice dams. And that's where a lot of the leaking comes from on these roofs. That's why open valleys in our area are not nearly as good, in my opinion, because we get a lot of ice damming. And this is just a little bit extra protection. If you have a really bad ice dam, it doesn't matter. Now on this pitch, we are able to get away with not cutting shingles very often, if ever. We're able to keep our offset um, and work up this valley without cutting. Um, depending on the pitch, you're gonna have to cut some of these in order to maintain your six inch offset. into full courses now so we can just continue this all the way up if you guys don't want to see this part just fast forward a little bit I'm gonna keep it going just to show um, exactly what we do Now, as far as keeping my shingles straight, I know that this tar paper is very, very straight. So I'm able to look at my lines and know that we are straight. All right, well, my partner had to pee. I want to show you guys this kind of raw and unedited. Um, that way you understand. I don't want to cut this out because some of you probably would like to see this and no, some of you don't. Again, being real careful with our nails. We need a 12 inch spacing between nails here, one on the end, 12 inches in but not in the middle of the valley. And then up here, this will all get covered up.
there you can see what we have here. Um, now we're going to start our shingle courses that are going to run this way over into that valley. Now on this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run this and then we're gonna run this over the top. If you're looking on how to line up from this side to this side or all the way across, I just made a video not long ago um, on how to lay out and line up your shingles on each side of the dormer. Um, I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video here if you're interested in that. Um, otherwise, if you're, if you're interested in learning anything how to about roofing, I have videos all over on my channel. So the next thing we're gonna need is a chalk line. Um, and we're gonna chalk a line and we're gonna do what's called, I guess, I, I don't know if this is a proper term, but we call it a California Valley. Um, so we'll show you how that goes. Yeah, you good? I believe it. Yeah, I can see that good enough. So now we snap the line. Um, when you do this, whether you're doing like a California Valley or you're actually cutting your valley the old school way, um, you want to keep your line or your cut roughly about two inches from the center of the valley. So outside of the center. So that way water has a good place to travel. I see a lot of people put it right in the valley. It's going to collect a lot of trash and just look stupid. Um, I've seen people put it past on the opposite side of the valley. That's not a good idea. It's going to collect a lot of dirt, debris, and trash. Um, so you want to keep it out so that the water has a small channel right here that um, the majority of the water and trash can get out. So now at this point, we want to extend these courses just one more. It really depends on how these end up. But we're going to extend these courses one more row. In almost every case, your first course, um, once you're going over the valley, you're gonna weave it. Um, it's called a weave. And this is gonna get weaved right underneath this. Like so. Now, we're gonna go over. So this is why we snapped the line. Um, these are going to go just like this on that line. And we're gonna nail them right on this nail line. What this is going to allow you to do, especially on the pitch that we're on, this is going to allow you to do this entire valley with almost no cutting. Now, on a steeper pitch, you're not going to be able to do what I'm about to do and maintain a six inch offset. So this first course, how it landed, this is going to end up, this shingle is just going to stack this shingle. Um, you're not supposed to stack architecturals but since we're only doing one course, um, we're okay. And then we're gonna nail these like normal. Every single course, this corner right here is gonna line up to this. So, and we're maintaining a pretty good offset. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's good enough. And I always get hate in these videos. So no matter how I do this, somebody's gonna tell me I did it wrong. But I'm not trying to help professional roofers, but they, they like watching my videos. I'm trying to help somebody who has no idea what they're doing to be able to do this. Need some nails. So basically, 
We're just gonna continue that all the way up. And if you're worried about staying straight, we make sure that our tar paper is perfectly straight. So we know that this tar paper is straight to the peak. So that's how we maintain um, a straight line. You, uh, you can snap lines. Like here, I'm looking at this line and I can see that I'm going uphill just a little bit. So I'm just gonna cheat this side up just a tad. And just small, it's not off by a lot. So I just bumped that one up about an eighth of an inch. A lot of people say to run Run uh, two shingles when you start off a valley so you don't end up with a smile or frown. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, I'm gonna stop there. So there you can see kind of what the valley looks like. Um, and this is your straight edge. And it's really nice. We used to always cut valleys and run them long. Like if you're doing three tabs, you kind of have to. With architecturals, this is a really, really nice way to do it. Um, it keeps it really nice and straight. It eliminates a lot of cutting. And uh, I think all around just a better, cleaner project. And uh, it looks beautiful. So now I stopped. You wanna stop with the row when the top of your shingles is past the point where the valley and the ridge meet, um, which would be right about here. So now we're gonna run this straight across and we're gonna measure off of this to figure out where to start here and on the other side of that valley. So if you're looking to figure that out, I'll leave a link at the end of the video here um, to um, a video that I made on how to line up valleys on both sides. And uh, you guys can go watch that, how to install valley metal, how to shingle a valley. I got a bunch of videos like this on my channel. So go check some of those out. I appreciate you for watching. If I helped you, hit the like button. It helps out a lot. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will see you on the next one.